everyone, and welcome to Rock On Spotlight, your first stop for great independent music from all over the globe. I'm your host, Sherry Emily, and our special guest host tonight is Jerry Gallagher, bringing us a great guest for tonight, and here he is, Jerry Gallagher. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you all for tuning in here to, uh, to this, the Spotlight Show right here, and we have a spotlight tonight on the magic man himself, Irvin Magic Kramer. So... He's going to join us tonight, and we're going to talk about a lot of things tonight with Irvin Magic Kramer. We're going to talk about Ray Charles. We're going to talk about The Knack, Richie Havens, Dave Sturt and the Eurythmics, um, even, even Siegfried and Roy, and the old Quincy uh, television show. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Irvin Magic Kramer. Hello. Hello, Magic. How are you this uh, beautiful evening here in uh, Southern California? Uh, I am just fine. And you guys are all right? We're doing great. We're doing fine. Wonderful. We're doing real, real fine. Um, uh, Urban, uh, Magic, we'll call him Magic. You're going to have to explain to people why they call you Magic. I mean, I know, you know, but uh, we got to explain to our people out there why why you, this is a magic show tonight. It doesn't have to do with any magicians. It has to do with the, the magic of music and the magic of Magic Kramer. So tell our, our audience out there, and there's quite a few people listening, uh, so tell them all about why they call you Magic. Well, okay, the, you know, if, I, when I tell the ladies, it's, it's because it's less embarrassing than be called, oh, God. But uh, the real reason is because I played with the Knack in the early 90s, and they were Lakers freaks, and Urban Magic Johnson at the time was a the superstar of basketball, so that's how I got that nickname. And when you're named Urban, which even the good people of the earth had a very difficult time Pronouncing, especially before Magic Johnson, uh, you had to have a nickname. Before that, it was Vinny, the big man. When I played with Body Bramlett, it was Vinny, Doctor I, whatever. So, the Magic, I just okay, all right, I'll take it. So, so that's so how tonight, that happens. Have, tonight we have the Magic Man, Magic Kramer. So we'll we'll, we'll call you Magic, Irvin. Okay, <laughs> that works for me. Yeah, that works for me. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about your past. Uh, your present and into your future too tonight. Uh, you're, we're going to talk about you know Ray Charles, the Knack, Richie Havens, and all that stuff. But you've got a, some new music out that um, we're going to highlight for you tonight. And we're going to play as many of these as we can. We've got six different songs here uh, uh, ready to go. We'll see how many of these we can get through. But we got Sweet Angel, Misery Man, uh, Lucky in Love, Better Safe Than Sorry, Teardrops to Diamonds, and Set uh, Set for the Money. Um, that we're all going to uh, we're going to try to get as many of those up tonight and let uh, you share those with the the listening public, so uh, we'll, we'll get into that Great. in a bit, but uh, first of all, uh, you, you mentioned the Knack, tell us a little bit about, when, when were you with the Knack, and, and uh, how, did, how did that all transpire? Um, I, I played with um, the Knack in the, in the early 90s, it was all the original members plus me on just doing live dates, primarily, and uh, it came about because I was in a band with a guy who had been playing with Doug Figer while Doug Figer was doing a solo career. And so, because I played both keyboards and the guitar and sing, they needed somebody with those skills. And um, and that turned into actually being the knack, getting back together. So that wow. was what that was about. So how long were you, were you with them? How long did you stay with them? Uh, a couple of years. And uh, basically, uh, what happened was when uh, Bruce, uh, Bruce Gary... Uh, Left the band, they hired uh, Pat Torpe, which is who was a singing singing drummer, and and both Doug and Burton, the, the co-writer, the you know the primary writers in the Knack were very literary driven, and Doug had read Hammer the Gods, and I think he kind of wanted to do the Led Zeppelin thing, so my position just sort of folded, and I moved on to other things. Okay. Well, we'll get on to those other things in a minute here, but uh, we're going to go to right, right now one of your songs. So uh, this is some of your the stuff that you're just putting out there now. Um, which one do you want to go to first? We've got Sweet Angel, Misery Man, Lucky in Love, Better Safe Than Sorry, Teardrops from, uh, to Diamonds, and we'll leave set, to, set for the Money a little bit later on the show because we're going to feature that one. Uh, well, Sweet Angel is the opening track on this the album American, which I have, which is my newest release. And uh, yeah, just start with that one. That's a good one. All right, we'll start with Sweet Angels, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be uh, bringing that to you from uh, Magic Kramer right now, and we'll be back with Magic, and we're going to talk about uh, Magic playing with the guy who was the opening act at Woodstock. That was Richie Haven. So um, stay tuned, and let's hear Sweet Angel. <laughs> A girl who waits 
another in that special place where the darkness has the day she will wash my first away she's my sweet angel She brings to the sorry souls like me who seek salvation in strong drink. She's my sweet angel of alcohol. She's my angel when I crawl. Uh, sweet angel ladies and gentlemen with uh, magic kramer there and we have uh, magic kramer here on the line with us on the rock on spotlight right here on the rock on radio network www.wrockradio.com and we thank you all for tuning in and listening to us on a regular basis but especially right here on the uh, spotlight show where we uh take uh artists from all over the world and we bring them right into your your living room your bedroom wherever you're listening to this on internet and uh we got Magic Kramer visiting with you tonight, and that was Sweet Angel. That was pretty cool, uh, Magic. A uh, little bit of uh, folk, a little bit of country, a little bit of rock, all mixed into one. There, that's a pretty pretty cool little rendition. Uh, what was uh, what you. was what was the story behind that, and uh, what what was the inspiration? Well, the inspiration for that is when we uh, one of our favorite places that we play out here with the Magic Kramer band is Ireland's Thirty Two, and when we would play. Uh, one of the cocktail waitresses, Jenny, would be bringing us drinks, and I would introduce her as our sweet angel. And somebody from the audience said, "Ah, oh, good song title." And you know, an opportunist like I am, I I never wanted to turn out a good idea. That one just happened to work out. It's for all the cocktail waitresses of the world who take care of us. And it's a a little bit. Uh, I was influenced on that one a little bit by Judy Ruffin's "What Becomes of the Broken Heart," if you can 
hear that a bit in the track. So that's, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, there, there's all the cocktail waitresses of the world, and especially you, Jenny, who inspired that. So uh, That's right. Little sweet. God bless you. Yeah, there you go. Well, let's talk a little bit about, uh, and we're going to go on to some more songs uh, coming up in the hour here with Magic. So hang in there. There's some uh, great stuff coming up there, and that was a great uh, start to the show with uh, Sweet Angel. But tell us a little bit about um, Richie Havens, playing with Richie Havens. Now gone. Um, I, uh, yeah, well, how that happened, I had this great fortune of, uh, of hanging out with him one day in the studio when I was... Um, helping with an album that was the soundtrack album for the movie Homer and Eddie, which was Whoopi Goldberg and, and uh, Jim Bellucci. And um, we were just hanging out, and I had actually played the acoustic guitar part like Richie Havens on the track, and he was uh, very forthcoming with his story. He told me that when he found that certain way that he plays with his thumb hanging over the neck on one side, and his finger all the way up on the other neck. He said when he was in New York and started doing that, that's when his career took off, and he just followed that road. So wow. that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Is, you know, well, he's legend. I mean, he's uh, you know legend in our time, and um, you know what a what a privilege to be able to you know play. Yeah, play I've, I've, not, yeah I've been really lucky in, in, in the in the in the wonderful iconic musicians that I've, and artists that I've had the uh, the great fortune to have performed or recorded with. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, with, with Richie, did did you actually uh, do a session with him or, or a song? Oh with yeah, him? we did a song for Homer and Eddie. Uh, yeah. I forget what the hell it was called. The movie. Yeah, so, um, anyway, the movie came out, and uh, you can see it occasionally on on TV. And the best thing about it was the soundtrack, and particularly that song. There you and go. I can't remember the remember the title. Yeah. He says that in a very biased way. <laughs> Yeah. No, but I mean, I, I was on the on the, a lot of the other material too. But of yeah. course, there was a, that was the premier song from that album, well, from so that well, soundtrack. The one you're certainly remembering, isn't it? Hang yeah, the out. one whose title I can't did it lose me again. I mean, that was 20 years ago. You know, whatever. Well, but, to yeah. be continued. We'll get back to you later on in the show or later on in the year to tell you what the name of that uh, that song was. But uh, shout out your uh, your website and where people can get a hold of you, uh, Magic, because uh, you know. A lot of stuff that we're going to be throwing out there tonight, and maybe one people want to get in touch with you, get your music, download it, and communicate with you in, in any which way. So tell them, tell them where to get a hold of you. Well, the best way to get a hold of me is I think if you go to www.magicframer.com, it will take you to my Facebook fan page because that's what I have going at this moment in time, and that's the easiest way. Yeah, and, and the most interactive, so that I can respond uh, to. Uh, Whoever's interested out there. Well, cool. That's www.magickramer.com, and you can hook up with Magic and get to know all that's happening with him and what he's doing. Yeah, or, or you can go straight to Facebook and go to, to the Magic Kramer page. There you go. You'll find it. Not too hard. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go yeah, on. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say that this, if you like what you hear on this record, it is. It's called the album's called American. It's available on iTunes and every other digital outlet that there be. So. No. That's American yeah. by Urban Magic Kramer. So go get that yeah. and download it and buy it and keep musicians yeah. in a happy mood by buying their, their music. Yeah. There you go. All right, well, let's go to another song uh, from that album, <laughs> American, and uh, you're going to hear it here on the Spotlight Show, the Rock On Spotlight Show, right here on the Rock On Radio Network. But uh, we've, we've, used, we, uh, we've played Sweet Angel. Let, let's, what do you want to do? Misery Man, Lucky in Love, Better Safe Than Sorry, Teardrops to Diamonds, or set for the moment. Oh, we, we could do we could do misery man. That's a good one. That started the whole thing off. So I mean the whole kind of right. kind of launch my songwriting thing. So we can start with that one. Okay, we'll get that one loaded up for you right now. Misery man coming up, ladies and gentlemen, by Magic Kramer. And when we come back, we're going to talk about a good old friend of mine, Dave Stewart from the, Dave Stewart and the Eurythmics. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to go right now to Misery Man by Magic Kramer. Give me 
you have it. M -m 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 Misery Man. By Magic. Mm -hmm. Misery Man. I love it. I love it. So we, we got Jenny, uh, the cocktail wait waitress, inspired the first one. Who inspired Misery Man? Tell us about that one, Magic. Uh, that one is for anybody who's ever, you know, uh, found themselves, uh, you know, in a sort of a painful relationship. How can I say it? Yeah. Well, it's you called know, life. Isn't it? It's called life. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, that's true. So, you know, if, basically we're here to deal. If you're my girlfriend, you get 15, 20 seconds of the best sex of my life, and then a year later you really get annoyed. So that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, when, when the women get annoyed, they tend to, uh, to wander. And so that's what that song's about. Yeah. Misery Man, ladies and gentlemen, by Magic Kramer. And you can get a hold of Magic at www.magickramer.com or on his Facebook site at Magic Kramer. So go check that out. And check out this because you work with a good old friend of mine, Dave Stewart. And uh, and well, actually, Annie Lennox is more, more of a friend than I met uh, Dave through Annie. Uh, but Annie and I both come from Scotland. And I used to hang out with Annie quite a bit back in the day. And uh, obviously, I met Dave Stewart through Annie and... Uh, Hung out down in his London uh, studio down there many, many times. So tell us a little bit about Dave Stewart and the Eurythmics. Well, I didn't work with the Eurythmics, but I did. I worked with Dave on a project that he had going when he, and he, he I guess he's transplanted to Southern California. Anyhow, yes, anyhow, it's, uh, he was between publishing deals and he was able to, he was working on the theme song for the Legoland theme park. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, my job was to uh, creatively engineer and edit and, as he says, mess things up in the track. And uh, we recorded over at, uh, at a, a beautiful studio in, uh, in the, the Beverly Hills owned by Paul Allen, one of his joints. It was awesome. And uh, I think, uh, and then Eric Idle showed up, so that was pretty cool. Oh, pretty cool. Yeah. You know, uh, so uh, we worked together for... A lot of jokes on on the set that that day with Eric Idle. Yeah, you know, I, I can't remember there being any particular one joke. We were we were fairly <laughs> busy. Yeah. Well, cool guy. Yeah, yeah, I'm that. I've known Dave for quite some time. He's a, quite a character, an intense, intense guy when it comes to music. Really intense. Yeah, very, he's a nice cat, man. I, I really I enjoyed that experience. Yeah. Did Did Annie come by at any chance? By no, uh, uh, she, she's just, all. Yeah. She's also a wonderful person. I mean, I love Annie. She's uh, she does a lot for charity, a lot for you know, for for the yeah. you know, and uh, what have you. So I mean, uh, you know, they've 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 used their their uh, their uh, you know their publicity and their their uh, stature to the to the best. Both of them have, and uh, it's great. I mean, um, Dave Stewart uh, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, well. Dave Stewart and Annie Lennox together became uh, what was called the Eurythmics back back in the day. And had some that was awesome. Yeah, that, that first song, that first song was just wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, they did. dreams were made of this. I mean, just just the breakout thing. Just, I mean, besides all the other things they did, that was awesome, and the video was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they were. They just took the world by storm. I mean, they, you know, what, one day yeah. overnight you heard about the Eurythmics, and that's been that way ever since. I mean, when they're they're legendary. Yeah, now. Now, yeah, you hung in the game too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you've had some uh, some great experiences. The Knack, uh, Richie Havens, Dave Stewart, um, and we're going to talk later on in the show about Ray Charles. I mean, you spent a lot of time with Ray Charles, but uh, we're going to go to another song right now. And when we come back, we're going to talk to you about uh, a different facet of your career, and that's uh, scoring uh, for the making of Siegfried and Roy show, and also composing for the TV show Quincy. So uh, let's go to okay. a song. Um, uh, lucky in love, better safe than sorry. Teardrops to diamonds are set for the money. Let's do. Let's do. Uh, let's do. Uh, let's do. Lucky in love. Lucky in love. Okay, we'll get that set up for you. Lucky in love coming up, ladies and gentlemen, by Magic Kramer, and uh, we'll be back and we're going to talk about Siegfried and Roy and the old Quincy show with my good old friend. I used to hang with this guy too, Jack Plugman, back in the day. Uh, old Jack, he was uh, quite a character. But uh, we're going to go to Lucky in Love by Magic Kramer, and we'll be right back right here on Rock on Spotlight on the Rock on Radio Network. I'm lucky in love. Lucky in love. When they see me 
and down in a bed I lost this morning won't let them call me loser I know it ain't true shaped and holding busted hearts while I've been holding you I'm lucky in love lucky in love We had Sweet Angel, uh, Misery Man, and Lucky in Love uh, by Magic Kramer from the American album. Uh, and you can get that downloaded uh, from all the regular sources or go onto his website and check it all out, uh, www.magickramer.com, or check him out on Facebook. And uh, we're back with Magic on the Rock On Spotlight show right here on the Rock On Radio Network. So we thank you for tuning in and um, spending your day with us here on uh, W Rock Radio, uh, www.wrockradio.com. So thank you for that. We're going to now talk to Magic about um, Siegfried and Roy and my good old friend uh, Jack Turkman and the Quincy Show. So Siegfried and Roy, how did you get involved scoring the, the Siegfried and Roy Show, the making of Siegfried and Roy Show? Well, I had a job. My cousin uh, owned a company called Pacific Ocean Post and Visualize, which is a big post house in Santa Monica. And uh, I was doing. I, he got. I, you know, I got a job there. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jerry. Uh, as an A2, which is like an assistant engineer in the machine room. And he decided that uh, I was a better musician probably than the second engineer. So he had me uh, do half the score on an industrial that he created for Siegfried and Roy. Uh, that was that they sell. That they were selling at the shows. I think at least a hundred thousand of the, these things got sold. So. That's how I uh, got involved in doing that particular uh, project. And I, I, I didn't meet uh, Sufi De Roy uh, during, the, during the, uh, the process, but I do remember one, one quote from the, one of the guys in the movie, and I took it to heart. He, they said, every man must have a porpoise. <laughs> a porpoise. So I got a porpoise. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. I, mean, I just showed you how uh, diversified... Uh music is you can uh, get into a whole yeah. lot of with uh, Siegfried and Roy and they were very very famous out of Las Vegas for many years on uh, the Siegfried yeah. and Roy show had those uh, albino uh, tigers and all that stuff and, uh, an amazing uh, amazing stage show that was uh, second to none and I'm sure it cost a pretty penny to put on but uh, you know, you're scoring music the magic was scoring music for the Siegfried and Roy show out of Las Vegas there, so yeah, there you go. And then you did uh, some composition um, on TV, which is uh, 
pretty cool. Um, yeah, I watched. Yeah, I did the Quincy, a Quincy episode. It's famous too, because uh, uh, what's the, the girl that sings in Hole? Uh, uh, Cobain's wife, I forget her name. Anyway, she was an extra on that thing. So when they became famous, that show was like this: the uh, Star Trek Tribbles episode. Oh. And what it was was, it, yeah, it's like the punk episode of Quincy. And so they wanted a union punk to go write music for this thing. And I was in a band with a guy named Barry Squire who ran the job board at the local 47 Musicians Union here in L.A. And so I went down to the interview. I borrowed my buddies, dressed like a punk. I tore up my T-shirt. I put on these guys' motorcycle boots, which were two sizes too small. And I walked in to the 80 office of the 80 year old guy who was hiring and and uh i guess uh yeah he goes here chad take these lyrics go write some songs <laughs> so of course I, I took them home i threw them in the drawer and then i got a call from the vp of uh, mca he goes are you ready with those tunes i go well I'll, i have a session today i'll see you tomorrow and ran out and bought a germs record and you know circle jerks and uh did this thing on my porta studio wrote the songs went in there and got the gig but, uh, you know, I had a, a valuable lesson when about two days before the session to record this music, the guy, the 80-year-old guy that was the union rep called me and goes, listen, I'm going to make some changes on the songs. I go, well, you haven't heard the songs yet. He goes, oh, I know, but i got to make a living too. Oh. So I, I'm giving, you know, so one of my fingers is in the air while I'm going, yeah, yeah. And the best thing that happened was the uh, vice president called me back the day and said, he goes, did this guy help you with the songs? And I thought about it. And I go, you know, there's not a lot of really great sustained gigs for punks in the traditional corporate world of MCA. Mm -hmm. So I, I go, uh, I answered, and these two words made me a lot of money. I said, not yet. Not yet. And he was <laughs> he was off the copyright, and I made a lot more money. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's just, and we hung out, and I got to meet Jack Kludman and and uh, the the, uh, the director. You know, all, everybody likes to hang with musicians. Yeah. You know, gangsters, presidents, priests, you name it. So yeah. that was that story. Did you hang did you hang out with uh, Dantana's with Jack? That's where I always hung out with him, Dan Tana. Remember, Dan, remember Dan Tana's? Remember Dantana's in Hollywood? That was where I used to always hang yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I had a, I think I was able in my in my poor days to afford one steak there. Yeah. All right, it right. was really good. Yeah. You know, Dan yeah. Tana's that was the place you went to where everybody ended up there at some point. Right. The weekend. Yeah, the palms. Yeah. Bartoni's was the, was the, was the, was the, the good place. Yeah, that yep. was where the deals really went down in the that's old right. days. Yeah, that's the old yep. days. Old stuff, old style music here, ladies and gentlemen. Whenever we got together in restaurants and actually signed deals and stuck to those deals and made money with them. Yeah, and and then they took they took envelopes, you know, into the bathroom and came out with with radio play. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Things happen. Things happen. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you got you to now you got now the corporations do it legally. Yeah. Well, now the corporations control it all, and I don't know if they're doing a good good job of it because it's uh, not necessarily different. No, not different. really. All bottom line, and the the thing that's left out of music nowadays is what the thing that's essential to it, and that's musicians. You know, music nowadays, yeah. the, the thing that's left out is the actual person that makes the music, and that's that musician. But uh, now, we, we continue on. That's what this show is all about, is keep making sure live music gets to the audiences around the world on the Rock On Radio Network, and uh, that's what we do each and every week. And, uh, you know, I want to thank uh, Sherry Emily. She's on uh, doing engineering tonight for us, and Sheldon Snow. Well, they're usually the uh, the hosts of this show, and I've hijacked their show tonight, basically, to, to bring magic on. But uh, I want to thank them for that. And uh, I think Sherry's kind of liking what you're you're playing there. Uh, what, well, that makes you a lot happier. I mean, I'm glad that you like it, too. I love it. I love it. Yeah, that. Thank you. I love thank it. Thank you. There you go, Sherry's. Uh, Sherry right loves on. it. You know, you got, right you got, on. You got two votes. Hey, it's all about the love, man. It really is. It's all about the love. It's all about the love if you download it and pay for it. <laughs> well, yeah. Just if you love it enough, if you love it enough to get me to your town to play, that would be enough. There you, you know? go. Yeah. Hook them up. Hook them up, up, up on a local gig in your town. And Magic Kramer. That's Kramer. right. To I'll be happy to be there. Yeah. We're going to talk a little bit about Ray Charles. We're going to talk a lot about Ray Charles tonight because you did a lot with him in, on your, the duets album. And, uh, you know, you played alongside a lot of people. So how did the, yeah. Charles, the Ray Charles um, gig come about? How did you get involved with the, that duets album, which is pretty, pretty great album. I mean, a lot of people, you know, are on yes. that album. It's amazing. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it was an awesome record, and and this it, it's a the way I the way that I got on the way that I connected up with Ray Charles is I had a uh, recording studio in 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 Burbank, California, and there was a bunch of there's three or four different subdivisions in this building, and uh, my next door neighbor was uh, his engineer producer Terry Howard, and when I built when I upgraded my studio, I had used some of Terry's gear and. I lived in my studio, and uh, uh, he lived in, in his shop, and that's where a lot of these songs came out of. And um, he he really liked the song "Cure Us the Diamonds," and it was one of his favorite songs. And then my studio, of course, I found the studio business at that time to be uh, beyond me because all I really wanted to do was like make music. So uh, basically, that's what I did. And when I finally got kicked out. Uh, I, I was, re- you know, I, I didn't know what the hell I was going to do, and I figured I got to do something somebody wants. And the phone rang almost instantly, and I went out on the road with Michael Jackson as a tech for a couple of years, and went around the world. And so wh- then I had world class keyboard tech skills. And when Terry had a problem with Rand the Road, he called me. I'd help him out. And then Terry got an opportunity after 9/11 to produce from scratch, which he had never done a track at Ray's studio, and he, he really, as the other guys that had moved into my space, he befriended them and gave them the job of trying to arrange uh, a song called God Bless America again, like my song, Turn Off the Diamonds, and Terry was about to lose the project, so he brought me in and I fixed it up, and so I became, uh, after just not only doing technical and digital editing work with Ray, I sort of then graduated on to become, you know, his uh, guitar player and musician for him. And uh, I got one associate producer credit, but he was very, very, very nice to me. I was happy to be there. I felt honored and blessed because he was the guy that I most respected as, uh, you know, the forces of music in the 20th century. So I was a very, very, very lucky guy. And uh, and uh, he was a righteous man to me. So... Cool, cool. I mean, Ray Charles is, is, you know, I mean, he's a legend. I mean, he, he talked oh, about he, he was like the Beethoven of the 20th century in my book, you know. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Amazing yeah. guy. And you mentioned uh, Cheered Up uh, to Diamonds there, so that was a good segue. Why don't we go to Cheered Up to Diamonds now and we'll play that song. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about Ray Charles, B.B. King, Billy Preston, uh, Nora Jones, Natalie Cole, Bonnie Raitt, Willie Nelson, James Taylor, and Les Paul. Uh, so... They were all involved with that album that uh, the magic just explained about there, and uh, we'll come back to that. But right now, let's let's just a uh, segue from you mentioned teardrops to diamonds. Let's just segue right into teardrop to diamonds. This is, yeah, this is the reason I got to play with Ray. This is the reason. Teardrops to diamonds, Magic Kramer.
the motel sign Don't keep me up anymore at night Teardrops to Diamonds, Magic Kramer, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, pretty cool. I mean, I heard a lot of Willie Nelson in that one. Man. I, I, I could see Willie doing that, so um, amazing. Yeah. Well, he's one of the guys that you actually work with. Uh, let me run down this list again, ladies and gentlemen. We're on we're on the air with Magic Kramer, and we're talking now about uh, uh, a thing he did with the Ray Charles, a duet album that he worked with a Ray Charles, and that. And uh, we're back now, but um, that was that was a song that he did, did did off of his American album, and you can get a hold of that by contacting him at his website or on on Facebook or on any of the download album. Uh, uh, sources for uh, for music, but uh, you know we're talking to him about some of his history and um, intermingling some of the new songs. But that connection there is you know the Willie Nelson. I heard a lot of Willie Nelson in that song that you just did there. And you worked with Ray Charles, BB King, Billy Preston, Nora Jones, Natalie Cole, Bonnie Raitt, Willie Nelson, James Taylor, Les Paul, all on this. Uh, they were all on this uh, Ray Charles duet album. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Well, that must have been an experience working with all these individuals. Uh, it was great. It was, yeah, it was an experience of a lifetime, uh, and uh, like I say, I mean, I'm I'm blessed. I I I, I thought I was cursed. It turns out I've been blessed. You know, it's uh, an amazing life, and I'm I was just happy to be there and and be involved in 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 those experiences and and do the best I could to to help the project. Uh, you know, it was it was genius company, and we found out very much in the beginning. The first session we did was with B.B. King and Billy Preston and Ray, and Ray got sick that day, and he went to the hospital, and that's, you know, that's when we knew he was dying. So, but most of the people on the outside didn't know at the time, and uh, I knew it was going to be his, an historical album, and um, I was, uh, you know, it was a very important thing and, and to the world. So I was happy that I could help in any way if I did, you know. Sadly, sadly so many of these people are now past, too, and... Uh... You know that flashing moment in time. Like you got, you got to, you know, take every moment you can and, and live it to its fullest because you know Ray's gone, BB's gone, Billy's gone, and uh, that. You know, it's... eventually the Grim Ripper's going to come and get you. I'm going to get you. You got to, got to run as fast as you can to keep in front of them. That's the big. Thing. That's right. There's another song for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you go. Billy Preston. I I used to do a lot with Billy. Um, you know, he had uh, he was keyboard player. Supreme V3 player, you know, unbelievable V3 player, and um, he was uh, tagged as the fifth Beatle back in the day. He was one of the, the only guy, oh, yeah. was, the only guy ever that got put on uh, a featured uh, credit on a Beatles album. I mean, a lot of people worked with the Beatles, but he actually was, uh, you know, a featured uh, artist on a Beatles album. It's the only time they ever featured somebody and put it on the album. So. Um, well, you know, the, you know the, the the funny the word is that they they, they really wanted you know they loved to have had Ray Charles and Billy Preston was Ray's organ player was his protege right. so that's why the Beatles got him yeah, yeah. Well, amazing amazing so, but, yeah and BB yeah, King great, great. I was it I was it I, I saw a picture of you and BB uh, playing the guitar together how was it playing with uh, with BB it was awesome the, you know we were warming up it was the rhythm section Billy. And me and Ray and BB hadn't gotten there. And BB showed up first. And he walked right over to me and he goes, "That guitar sounds good, like a guitar. I don't know what they need me for." You know, I just melted. You know, wow. and uh, you know, and then the session went down. And at the end, you know, Ray that was when Ray Ray was an introvert and BB was, was very love to talk. And he was uh, interesting story. He was talking to the you know the, the film crew guys there, and they mentioned some of the stripper. And BB got real embarrassed, and he goes, "No, no, no, I like new woman." You know, not not too young, sixty sixty five, still looking good. That was a <laughs> true story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. BB yeah, uh, Ray. I mean, those are legends, man. And Billy Preston there. Yeah, all all, all of them. You know, all the stuff, the people that I play with. Nora Jones is very nice. Uh, you know, on that on the Nora Jones song, it, it was Billy Preston played a wonderful solo. Of course, I played a wonderful wonderful solo too. But he was, you know. He got the actual solo on the record, but I figured that one out. So that's yeah. a yeah. He's a, he was a great, wonderful musician, nice guy, you know. Yeah, well, Will, Willie's a wonderful guy. I mean, he's a tremendous guy. I, I think I told you my story about uh, playing golf with him at his. Uh, he has um, no. on his estate. He's got a he's got a nine hole golf course, and uh, I used to go down there and hang out with him and play golf with him. 
And um, the first time I ever played golf, I went out on the golf course with them. And instead of, uh, you know, the markers to tell you how long the hole is and what par it is, is a chalkboard. And I said, really, <laughs> you know, how long is this hole? And he goes, does it matter? I go, well, not really, I guess, but just, you know, give me some idea. He goes, I go, what par is it? He goes, well, son, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit a lot about life. And he takes out a piece of chalk and he puts a seven on the board. And I go, well, what's this? He goes, today it's a par seven. I'm not feeling too good. It's my course. I can name it anything else. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, yeah. uh, he was controlling his own destiny. <laughs> hey, you know, I, I, never, I didn't get to meet him on this session. I, I actually, uh, Ray, had, Ray had a wild hair about me changing one chord that he did while he was singing, while Willie was singing the intro with his acoustic guitar. And that was another story, but the thing that I, that I, that it was, that I discovered about Willie Nelson was that every sour puss in the music business, I don't care how much of a drag they were, they loved this guy. Everybody loves Willie. Oh, but yeah. he's doing something right. Well, you know, besides, funny. besides his musicianship, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he's one of these guys that just does his thing and goes out there and, you know, he's not looking for friends, but he's picking them up no matter where he goes. He's, uh, he, he is universally loved more than any other guy in that world I have come across. Yeah. And I, I tell you, another guy that, that's universally loved and, and is now gone and was very well respected was Les Paul. Did you, you, he was on that album. Did you work with Les at all? No, I, I didn't, but he was, he was friends with... Um, uh, Terry Howard wanted Les Paul to be on the record at the time, and I had played something in lieu of his playing on the record, and I never did get a chance to meet him, unfortunately, because not only was he the monster musician that he was, but he was also the inventor of multi-track recording. Yeah. So, as an engineer, and that side, of, he had it all covered. Yeah. He was an amazing, you know, had it all covered. So. Um, that he that he was well loved by you know by Willie I mean by uh, Ray Charles too, but I, I did not get actually did not we did not cross paths on that record. You know I, another Les Paul uh, little story on that was that uh, my son's a guitar player he's a uh, he's uh, over in Scotland and um, I introduced him to Les Paul and uh, he said oh Mr Paul I, you know you're my hero I love you and maybe someday I can get an autograph from you so you know Les gave him an autograph and he goes someday kid. I'm going to get you one of my guitars. And we never thought about it. It just went, you know, went by the wayside. And uh, then and Les passed away. And my son got in the mail a package from the Les Paul estate with a, a guitar that belonged to Les Paul. And he, oh, wow. uh, he, uh, that was, you know, he lived up to his word. And, I, you know, we never expected it. We just thought, oh, that's, just, that's a nice token of gesture and stuff like that. But um, sure enough, he got it, and it was signed by Les, and it was, signed, you know, so he, he must have left some sort of a note to take care of this because uh, it was a, a big surprise for all of us. Yeah, you know, the measure of man is this word, as they say. Yep, yep, there it is. There it is. All right, let's go to another song because we're getting close to the end of the show here, but uh, uh, we're going to come back and talk a little bit more with um, Magic Kramer. Uh, but we got two more songs left to go. Do you want to do Better Safe Than Sorry or do you want to – uh, do set well, are we gonna, are we, are we, do you have enough time to cover them both? Or yes, we, to... we got plenty of time, yeah. We've got about another 12 minutes or so, uh, 11 minutes. Okay, well, uh, let's, uh, let's go to, uh, let's go to, um, uh, um, set for the money because this really sums up what it is to be a musician. All right, set for the money. Work, a working musician. Yeah. Well, all you musicians tuning in and listening, which I know a lot of you do because this is a very popular show for the indie musician out there. Magic's going to tell you what it's all about here with Set for the Money, and uh, we're going to go to that right now. Magic Kramer, ladies and gentlemen, Set for the Money, right here on the Rock On Radio Network. <laughs> As sweet as honey, sometimes it's just like work, except for the money. Yeah, there's women and there's drinking and there's smoking and there's sitting and a million miles of driving and the life of heavy lifting. If you ain't too tired, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes it's just like work, except for the money. Bye. 
like work Except for the money like work except for the money with magic kramer so there you go ladies and gentlemen it's all about work and money <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and love and love don't forget the love it's the reason we live the reason we die you know well, that love is easier with money than without it <laughs> <laughs> yes so tell us that tell us the, the, the background that it's all about you know well you can hear the music industry all all in there it is work but it's uh, you know we well, it. you know, when it's, you know, I guess there are guys that that's not true for anymore. I mean, I mean, there are people that have been used and successful. But when you're struggling, the reason that it's you keep the struggling. First of all, everybody thinks it's a glamorous life, so that people always ask you, "What is it like?" Oh, it must be great for you. You get all the girls, you get all the money. Anyway, this is like a little background to how it's what's like behind the curtain there. So, uh, you know, it's just my, my experience said in a, in a nice way. But you know what? It's a beautiful thing. We do it because of the love. And, and it's worth all the expense and, and all the trials and tribulations and all the suffering to be able to see the love in the room. It really is. That's why I, that's why I do it. That's why you know, it's money, money can't buy you love. That's yep. it. And a lot of uh, a lot of what musicians do is is based on love. I mean, you you got to love what you're doing to put in the sacrifices that a lot of musicians put in, you know, in their career. Yeah, think, yeah. you know, if you're into hating your job, you can get a lot lot more lucrative of a profession. You know? oh, as long as you, can, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah without, uh, I think I think I think a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of love is uh, is substituted in uh, your day to day life uh, in jobs. But uh, a musician, you can see it when when. When people are, are playing their, their music and, and jamming, you can see it in their face. They're enjoying every minute of it, uh, whether yeah. they get paid for it or not. But it, it's better to get paid for it. <laughs> it's better yeah, yeah, you know, you, you, there's uh, three ways you can judge success. You know, you can, you, the first one, the most important one, the basis of all other success is having a, uh, being able to enjoy, create that love in that room. Okay, that's, that's what it is. That's the core fire of everything that drives the music industry or, you know, an artist or whatever. The next thing that you can do to measure your, the problem with that is, you know, you can forget those images in your mind. Your memory will fade. You can count the money up that you got in the bank from all your record sales, but if you ain't got any, that ain't going to cut it. The third way is Ray Charles can hire you. That's, you know, I'm blessed and that, that's how I'm blessed. There you go. Yeah. You're the, the keys to success. Uh, you know, find yourself yeah. somebody like Ray Charles and get hired. <laughs> yeah. But somebody that you love, that loves, that loves what you do. That's, that's it. That's you it. know. Well, yeah. Magic, we're drawing to the end of the show here. It's been great having you on, and we're going to go out uh, the show with uh, uh, better safe. Oh, 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 yeah, better safe than sorry. That's our, our right with the great Albert Lee featuring the great Albert Lee on guitar. Our, our, 
our yep. mutual friend there, uh, Albert. We love him, and he's been on the show, and he's been on uh, the Rock On Radio Network quite a few times. So uh, we're going to feature him on uh, Better Safe Than Sorry. But thank you for joining the show uh, tonight, uh, Irvin. Um, Magic Kramer, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for, for being with us. Thank you, my friend. Uh, I see you every Monday night. So we're, we're coming up with a, a new project called Sola that Magic's involved yes. with. So that's, that's right. coming to a, a, a studio and a stage near you soon. So watch for that. But uh, tonight's all featuring American, the album by Magic Kramer. And we're going to have a little bit of uh, that to end the show tonight and featuring Albert Lee. So thank you, my friend. Thank you. I'll see you Monday thank night. You. <laughs> thanks, and, thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Sherry. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, everybody. And let's go to Better Safe Than Sorry, featuring the great guitar of Albert Lee. Thank you, Magic. Thank you, Jerry, thank for you. being here this evening. We greatly appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in right here on Rock On Radio on Rock On Spotlight. Better Safe Than Sorry by Magic Kramer. Have a great night. Rock On. Rock On. Rock on. <laughs> 